Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. This is being recorded for release on Tuesday, May the 1st. And I'm going to be telling you today about a couple of news stories, and maybe we'll work in a third as well. These stories are going to be on the front pages, I think, for the next couple of weeks or so. This from Ynet News, Yeriot Aharonot. It's an Israeli news agency, and the headline is, Chances of Iran War Decreasing. The subhead, U.S. officials tell New York Times that the chances of conflict with Islamic Republic over their nuclear program have lessened significantly thanks to sanctions and negotiations. Now, that's a fascinating subhead. Here's the uh, lead line of the story from Ynet. International sanctions are doing their job. Tehran is showing flexibility, and the chances of war with Iran are receding. That's how the experts and officials within the Obama administration have assessed the situation in an interview that they gave to the New York Times. And then a lot of the facts from this Ynet story are taken from the Times. Uh, the feature uh, published in Monday's edition uh, claims that after a winter of alarm, quote unquote, over the possibility of an imminent military conflict with Iran vis-a-vis -vis its nuclear program, the chances of war with the Islamic Republic in the foreseeable future have lessened significantly. The officials and the experts cite a series of factors that for now argue against a conflict. Well, what has in fact happened to lessen the chances of a, a, an immediate war? Uh, you may recall that on Easter Sunday, April the 8th, at least 200 American and Arab uh, Gulf Coast fighter bombers thundered overhead at the outset of the biggest Air Force exercise ever conducted in the Persian Gulf region. Remember that one? The USS Enterprise Aircraft Ter uh, Carrier Task Force Group, the USS Abraham Lincoln Aircraft Carrier Task Force Group, the USS John Stennis, another nuclear aircraft carrier group in the Mediterranean, along with Saudi, United Arab Emirates, and Bahraini forces, took to the skies, showing uh, how strong they were, basically conducting exercises on Iran's western border and, of course, all across the Persian Gulf. Do you suppose that that might have had something to do with what today is being referred to as international sanctions doing their job. The New York Times seems to think that it's conversation that's bringing peace. I kind of believe that, that that Easter Sunday joint task force exercise in the Persian Gulf, which by, by the way is the biggest one ever held in history uh, in that area. And so we have that story, and now we have another story from the Jerusalem Post about a top UN uh, truce monitor in Syria, uh, and that uh, happens to be a, a, a United Nations general from Norway. General Robert Mode is his name, and this is Dateline Beirut, a Norwegian general charged with overseeing a shaky UN-brokered truce in Syria arrived in Damascus on Sunday, boosting a monitor mission that activists say has helped ease the violence in the city of Homs, hotbed of a 13-month uprising in Syria. And of course, you've been following with us all the activity in Syria. People have been saying that, that a large-scale war is imminent in the region. Uh, and now we have a United Nations general coming in as peacekeeper. General Robert Mode acknowledged the huge task awaiting the planned 300-strong unarmed in, uh, mission, uh, which now has 30 people on the ground, but he said he was confident that they could make headway. He says, we may only be 300, but we can make a difference. 30 unarmed uh, observers, 300 unarmed observers, even 1,000 unarmed observers cannot solve all the problems, he said. I call on everyone to help us cooperate with this very challenging task ahead. Well, think about this for a moment. <clears throat> the Syrians uh, may be taking a cue from the forces of the West, dating all the way back to that uh, Easter Sunday 
operation that took place on the Persian Gulf. And that operation, the biggest in the region, in the history of the region, may have convinced uh, Bashar al-Assad that, well, it's time to come to terms with these people. Uh, I'm not sure that I can withstand a possible invasion of my airspace, and, and no, he could not if uh, the United States, Israel, and the UAE uh, joined forces in the region. And so now we have UN peacekeepers coming into Syria, and we also have uh, observers from the West saying that Iran is making noises as though they would like to talk peace. Damascus says that 2,600 of, of its own military people have died in the last 13 months, and that the West has ignored the fact that the street uprising has killed that many in the Syrian army. So they are now saying, well, we've been hurt too. And they're making sounds like it's time for peace. So although we have been looking uh, at this situation now for a year and saying that it looks impossible that the situation could cool down, it seems to have cooled for a while. And what did it take to do it? Peace talks? Hmm, not really. What it took was a show of military might. Gunboat di diplomacy with three nuclear aircraft carrier task force groups in operation back on Easter Sunday. And you know what? That all came and went. Nobody talked about it. Nobody seemed to notice it. One of the biggest shows of force in the history of the region. And it brought something like peace. At least uh, that's what General Robert Mode is calling it as he now uh, breaks forth upon Syrian soil with his peacekeepers. Uh, he's a Norwegian in the US, UN peacekeeping uh, corps, and we'll uh, be watching his activities very carefully in the days to come. You can be sure. Uh, in Israel, uh, a bit of sadness today. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's father, at the age of 101, passed away. And he was in the process of writing uh, his lifetime memoirs when he passed away. So he was still in possession of his faculties and, and had been uh, moving along even at his advanced age. And we, our uh, sympathies, of course, go to Benjamin Netanyahu, who has lost his father uh, as, as we speak. In fact, uh, uh, this is being recorded on the 30th of April, April for uh, release on May 1st. So uh, that's, uh, that's what's happening in the news. Uh, there is a kind of tentative peace leading into upcoming Israeli elections. Uh, and there are uh, some very hard-pressed political battles going on in Israel right now over whether or not Israel uh, will advance a uh, military force to try to quell the, the uh, nuclear uh, research that's going on in Iran. And I think the upcoming election, uh, which is going to fe feature an, an all-out fight between the Kadima Party and the Likud Party in Israel, uh, may well play its role uh, in upcoming uh, peace talks with Iran. So uh, there are a lot of variables right now. We're going to be watching all these and reporting them to you uh, day by day. Psalm 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built in a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks in the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. And of course, that psalm prophesies the uh, coming kingdom of God being headquartered in Jerusalem and uh, ruled with a rod of iron by our Lord. When Jesus returns, he's going to set up that kingdom. Between now and then, I think there will be a numerous outbreaks of hostility, just as prophesied uh, by prophets even thousands of years ago. So we're watching, and also, as Psalm 122.6 says, we are praying for the peace of Jerusalem. 
Psalm 122, 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. And we do have a love for Jerusalem for the simple fact that it is prophesied to be the, the place on earth, the single place on earth that will, uh, from which will come the rule of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about these things, and uh, we'll be watching as events unfold in the Middle East. Gary Stearman, keep looking out. 